Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about on a lovely day today, out on the uh, Triumph Speed Triple RS, a bike that I last rode in 2018. So it's high time I got up to date on this bike. I've been riding this one actually for the last couple of weeks and I've learned lots of stuff about it. So uh, if you're interested in this machine, stick around and stay tuned. I'll tell you what I've learned. So clearly I'm a Triumph fanboy with uh, two of my own here in the garage, the uh, Street Triple and the Speed Twin, as well as now the Speed Triple, just about to the Triumph tongue twisters. So this version of Speed Triple has been out since 2018. I did ride the bike back then and I did a review and I went through the spec and stuff on that. So if you haven't seen that video, do go and check that out. But what I want to do in this video uh, is actually concentrate on what are the important things if you actually live with the bike. What are the things that maybe the pro reviewers don't tell you about living with the machine? So what's it like to ride in the rain? Uh, what's it like to ride it on the motorway? Can you tour on it? All that kind of thing. As well as give you the lessons I've learned on this bike during the time that I've had it. So not just the good things, but the bad things too. So it's been rumoured in the biking press for some time that this particular bike is due a refresh soon. In fact, by the time you see this video, it may already be a thing. But if you're interested in this version of the bike in its twilight months, then stick around and stay tuned. This video is for you. And let's start off by seeing what the bike's like to ride in town. So what's the bike like in town then? If you're going to ride the bike uh, as a commuter, say, or your regular trip to take you through town, how's the speed triple fare? Well, I have to say pretty good feels light and agile so although it's not particularly uh, busy here in uh, the throbbing metropolis that is High Wycom it's nice to thread yourself through the uh, through the traffic here we go a little bit of uh, filtrage up towards the traffic lights no problem at all if I get my feet flat on the deck either side I'm a uh, five foot eight oh, very kind of that uh, fellow to pull over Cheers. Ah, not so good on the bus. Come on then. Ah, so the brakes work very well in town. We've established that. The brakes on here, by the way, are absolutely excellent. It's got the uh, amazing Brembo's, and both the front and rears work really well. And you feel like you're sat fairly high up, so you can see over traffic as well to sort of plan your route. Really not an issue uh, riding in town. The, the fueling at slow speed is nice. There's no jerkiness about it. Lovely and smooth this engine anyway. So I think it's a thumbs up to the uh, speed triple for riding it in town. Okay, so what's the speed triple like on motorways and faster roads then? Well, first thing I would say, there's absolutely no lack of power, of course, on this bike. So uh, here I am keeping up with traffic, indicated 71 miles per hour. So top speed on the motorway. There's loads more to give if you want to do a cheeky overtake. In terms of uh, wind blast, it's of course a naked bike. So uh, you would expect to get a bit of wind blast. But uh, actually, I have to say it's not too bad. got this little sort of uh, screen deflector thing on the nose cowl here and it doesn't do a bad job of directing most of the air away from you I'm not feeling any turbulent air in my helmet there's no buffeting anything like that which is great news and uh, yeah considering I'm cruising here like 70 miles an hour absolutely fine the other great thing with it as well it's got the uh, cruise control on here so if you are going to be doing uh, long stretches on motorways you can set up the cruise control give your hands a rest as well so uh, absolutely no issues if you've got to cover some miles on motorways on the speed twin Big triple even. Okay then, night time on the Speed Triple RS. What's that like? Well, it's uh, always a bit of a problem to demonstrate on the GoPro because even in low light mode, it doesn't really uh, give you a proper flavour of what the lights are like on here. So uh, I can tell you, <laughs> this dipped headlight is absolutely amazing on here. It does have daytime running lights on the Speed Triple as well. If I put it to uh, daytime running light mode, there you go, you can't ride like that. But with dip, you absolutely can. And uh, another great thing about this bike, I'll show you what the full headlight beam is like in a minute, but I've got an oncoming uh, bicycle or something here, might be a pedestrian, not sure, and a car now. 
But the other great thing about this, or oh, it is a pedestrian, is uh, the switch gear is all lit up. Again, you probably can't see that, but uh, a great feature. I don't know why more bikes don't do that. It's only Triumph on the newer bikes and uh, KTMs that I'm aware of that do that. All bikes really should have lit switch gear, I think, these days. The TFT, of course, is in its night mode, which uh, isn't glaring at all, which is very nice. And to just come around here and show you the full beam. To get it onto full beam, it's the trigger finger. You have to pull, and then it uh, turns night into day. Again, you probably have to take it from me that that's what it's doing. It looks really, really good, this headlight. It is, of course, uh, LED and super bright. So there's dip, and there's full beam. No problem at all, as far as the lights are concerned. So I think as far as riding the uh, Speed Triple at night is concerned, once again, it's a thumbs up. We've got lit switch gear, we've got really good lights, and uh, the TFT screen is nice and easy to read at night as well. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for the Speed Triple at night. So what's the Speed Triple like in the wet then? Well, actually, maybe I'll leave that down for sensible reasons. What's it like in the wet? Well, it's all right. I mean, there are a few things about the Speed Triple that make you think that uh, it's probably not that uh, great in the wet. It being a naked bike and it being shod with Pirelli Super Corsa tyres. The Super Corsas are excellent grippy tyres in the dry, but it has to be said they're not known for their wet weather performance. All that said, I have Super Corsas. I put them on my um, Street Triple and uh, I find them absolutely fine. I mean, I don't ride in the wet that often, but I, I've never had a moment on them. And it doesn't get much wetter out on the bike than it is today. I mean, it's been raining all morning. There's standing water around on the roads and so on. And the bike feels absolutely planted still. Once you get a bit of uh, heat into the tyres, if that's possible, then they feel right to me. I mean, obviously you can't go mad. Physics always plays its part. So that's the potential downsides of riding it in the wet. The upsides, of course, as is the case with so many modern bikes, is it does, of course, have traction control and ABS. And that means there's electronics there to help you if you do hit some slippy stuff. And that definitely uh, gives you a bit of a sense of security. So I have absolutely no problem riding the bike in the wet. If you're going to have one motorcycle to do everything, then the speed triple could absolutely do it. You could uh, you could commute on this in all weathers, no problem at all. Of course you've got to take it a little bit easier when the weather's all scuddy like this. Because at the end of the day, physics will take over and will defeat the rider aids, the grip on the tyres and so on. But take it easy, don't ride like an idiot. And the speed triple's absolutely fine in the rain. So whenever I make these sort of uh, living with type videos, there are always a bunch of questions that come up about some of the little practical things uh, about living with a bike. So I've made a note of these here. Uh, so there's a few things. First thing that always comes up is, uh, what's it like to ride with a pillion? Well, I can't tell you because I haven't ridden this one with a pillion. If you see, this has got a seat cowl on the back. So uh, not uh, not ideal for a pillion. And anyway, my only pillion is Mrs. Flyer and she won't go on any bike that doesn't have a top box. So I can't enlighten you on that, I'm afraid. Oh, I suppose on the subject of pillion, I can show you the pillion pegs at least. It does have them, here they go. Uh, they're quite high up. I'm not sure I'd want to actually be a pillion on that. So uh, yeah, untested, but I think a bit of a thumbs down for the pillion. Next thing that comes up occasionally is uh, how, how about pumping the tires up? What are the valves like on it? Again, this is a very practical thing. Uh, if we have a look on here, look, there's the valve. It's one of those right angle ones on the back, uh, which is great. I love those. They just make getting your pump in there easier. And the same here, look, on the front. So uh, shouldn't be an issue when it comes to pumping the tires up. Next thing that often comes up is lubing the chain. I'll show you the chain on here. It's on this side of the bike. Um, you'd have to get it on a paddock stand uh, or, or on something like an ABBA stand to uh, oil that properly. And it looks like that could probably do with a bit of an oil and a clean. Another thing that comes up often is how do you go, uh, how about uh, checking the oil on the bike? Is it one of those sight glasses or is it dipstick? Well, on here, down here, if we have a look, we've got a dipstick. So uh, there you go. You know how a dipstick works. It's in there somewhere. Anytime you like, there you go. An incredibly long dipstick, in fact. Right, uh, somebody also wants to ask me what is the horn like on the bike, so let's bring it to life by pressing that one. Come round here. Now, you'll have to take my word for it what the horn sounds like, but here we go, let's give it a go. Beep. Ooh, standard Triumph uh, um, horn, pretty flipping loud. Another thing that people always ask is what about fuel economy? Well, I haven't actually calculated this myself, but the onboard computer is saying 44.8 miles per gallon since I've been riding the bike, so we're uh, 
fairly thirsty, I guess. Another thing that comes up uh, every now and again is what is underneath the seat. So I need to get the key out and uh, use both hands for this. Let me move the camera and we'll have a look under the seat. All right, well, that's answered that. It turns out you have to take the rear seat cowl off uh, to get the seat off, and then the seat actually is attached by a couple of bolts, so I won't actually undo those. It's very wet in here because I've been riding it in the rain, and then I've washed the bike before I did this video. So there we go. That's what you've got underneath the seat. You've got a bit of a cubby hole here, uh, which you could store a very small sandwich or something in. Looks like that's where the ECU goes. And here looks like there's a USB port. Yep, there's a USB port just there as well. So uh, quite handy. You could at least charge your phone in there. Okay, last but definitely not least on this little practical section is uh, people always ask me, can, or ask, can I show you a picture of what it's like actually sat on the bike? So here's a little bit of uh, what we call in the, if this is a trade, B-roll of me sat on the bike uh, so you can see where my leg position is and whether I can get my feet down or not. So uh, yeah, that's what it's like to actually sit on the bike. Works absolutely fine for me. So next point to ponder then is uh, what is the speed triple? What would the speed triple be like on tour? You're going away for a nice ride somewhere and uh, you know you want to know if the bike's up for it. Well, absolutely it's up for it. It's, uh, I suppose the downside on it from a touring point of view is lack of luggage carrying capability. You can buy sort of a tail pack for the bag, but there's no luggage you know, in the proper sense as in panniers available, not from Triumph anyway, although no doubt there are aftermarket uh, accessories available. So you probably have to wear a rucksack or something, but no problem there. In terms of long distance comfort, absolutely lovely. The seat's quite hard, but it's a lovely riding position. I could ride all day like this. And uh, in terms of handling when you get to where you're going, well, this bike, you can just chuck it around. It'd be great fun if you're off on a long ride to the Alps. It'd be no problem down the motorway. Then hitting the twisties would be absolutely brilliant. Coming. So as a touring proposition, I think the speed trip will be absolutely great. So one of the things that's important to me uh, about living with a bike is what's the thing like in terms of its weight when you come to manoeuvre it around on your driveway. Shifting it in and out of your garage, things like that. So I'm just coming into this uh, car park here. I'll see if I can find a space. Often busy here actually, as it is today. I'll just see what the bike's like to lug about. Let's do my lug test. Right, where can I go? Alright, so I'm going to do one standard parking space away from the end. Look, right in the middle. There we go. Let's find neutral and uh, kill the bike. Stand is nice and easy to find. Okay, let's do the lug test then. Alright, so we're in the middle of this parking space. No grab handles to get hold of, which is interesting. So you have to sort of hold it by the cowl sort of cover bit here. And let's go around on full lock and see what she's like. Okay, it doesn't feel too heavy when you bring around, but the steering, look at that, full lock, and I've missed that uh, second parking space. So it's quite a big turning circle on here. And if I stop there, look, I'm almost into the realms of the next space. So full lock round from that space to there, that's the turning circle. Seemed quite wide compared to some bikes uh, that I'm used to, but it doesn't feel uh, heavy when you pick her up. So if you're a shorter person or uh, you know a bit wimpy like me, and you're going to have no problems moving this around on the driveway, that it's not going to be an issue getting this in and out of the garage. Lug test passed. So what's the speed triple like then as a back lane scratch? What's it like as a Sunday plaything? Well, that really is, I think, where this bike comes into its own. It's so light and agile feeling once you get it rolling. The only suspension is super plush and the handling on here is lovely. Unfortunately, as is so often the case, I've come out at the wrong time of day, look, and I'm stuck in traffic, even on these back B roads. Looking for an opportunity to overtake. Nothing behind me. All clear. Woohoo! Absolutely no drama overtaking vehicles on this bike. Nothing else coming, another one can go, another muggle dispatched. Yeah, fun times are plenty on the speed triple. As a fun 
back row blaster. The speed triple's got it covered. No other thumbs up. Okay, so that's all very uh, well and good, but what are the actual lessons I've learned since I've been riding this bike? Well, uh, stick around and stay tuned. Let's go through the pros and cons of the bike, starting with the negatives. Okay, there are a few bits and bobs here off of my uh, negatives list. As ever, I've written them down so I don't forget anything. So first thing I've put here is uh, colourways of the bike. I don't know what it is with the modern day Triumphs at the moment, but uh, some of the colours are a bit unimaginative. I quite like this white, actually. They, this comes in white or black. The black one has some sort of yellowy flex on. The white one, I'm not too keen on the sort of red accents and stuff. It just, the colours just aren't that inspiring on these. So that's the first thing on my negative list. Uh, next thing, uh, TFT layout on here. I'm always moaning about the uh, Triumph TFTs. I just don't think the layout on there is quite as good as this rivals. It's not as bad as some TFTs I've seen on Triumphs, I have to say. It doesn't have that Fisher-Price element that the original TFTs had, but uh, that one, not quite as good as, say, the Ducati Street Fighter uh, or the KTM uh, Super Duke R, in terms of just looking purposeful. Uh, next thing up, I've written here, and this may not be an issue, it certainly really isn't for me, but just worth mentioning, it's not as quick as its rivals. Again, if we're look, looking at Street Fighter from Ducati and uh, Super Ducar, it's not quite in the league of amazing beast-like performance that those bikes have, but it's got more than more than enough for me on here, but uh, thought it was worth mentioning, it's not as quick. Uh, another thing on here, something I'm always moaning about, keyless ignition, it's got that on here. We don't need keyless ignition, please stop doing that as an option, all bike manufacturers. That's not specific really to the Speed Triple, and it's not specific to Triumph, but I just don't get keyless ignition, that annoys me a bit. As you saw, to take the um, seat off, you have to use the key anyway. Uh, to do the fuel cap, you have to use the key anyway. So what's that all about? Okay, next up, uh, lacking some of the latest electronics now, like wheelie control and slide control. Again, not an issue for me really, but worth pointing out that this bike doesn't have as sophisticated electronics as some of its rivals. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of uh, electronics beyond things like traction control, Control and ABS anyway. I know some people are. Uh, just mentioned that in passing. Uh, next up, no heated grips as standard. Uh, Lop Triumphs do have heated grips. Uh, this one you can get them as an option, but they're 192 quid extra. Why on earth don't all bikes have heated grips as standard? And then the other thing was uh, a similar vein, Quick Shifter. Uh, it's a 340 pound option on this bike. Unfortunately, the Quick Shifter on this press bike doesn't work for some reason. Um, but if it did work, I'm sure it's very good, but I can't tell you about that. So the Quick Shifter, thumbs down on the fact that it's 340 quid as an option uh, and on this bike it didn't work anyway. Uh, and then last but not least, I've got a few pictures to show what I mean. No, well, there isn't like a mud guard on here or a mud catcher, but the back end of the bike gets very, very dirty uh, when you ride it in scuddy weather as I've been doing. So uh, yeah, you've got to like cleaning a bike if you're going to get one of these. All right, enough whinging. How about the positive points of the bike then? And there are loads about this bike. I'll say the best to last as well. Um, so first thing I mentioned, uh, written on my list is that I think the bike looks absolutely great. Despite those colorways I talked about, I think the bike looks purposeful. It looks uh, muscular. It looks, uh, it just looks bruising. It looks like the sort of bike it is. So the looks I absolutely love. Obviously very much a personal uh, viewpoint sort of thing. So you may agree or disagree, but I personally love the looks of the Speed Triple and indeed the Street Triple as well. Great looking machines and uh, long may those two headlights last, at least in my opinion. Uh, next up here, it, I wrote here, feels lighter than it looks. The bike actually feels very, very light and agile now. In the past, the previous sort of pre-2016 bikes, I always used to moan about speed triples feeling very lardy and heavy. And that's the reason why I bought the Street Triple back in uh, 2012, because that bike felt so much lighter than the Speed Triple, which is the bike I thought I was going to buy buy but I ended up buying this because it was lighter. Now that's no longer a factor, both the Street and the Speed Triple uh, feel very very light. Yes the Speed Triple is marginally heavier but uh, it's not a factor when you're riding it so it feels nice and light when you ride it now which is great. Next up, the engine on this bike. It's the 1050 unit. It's been around for a while, but uh, number one, it's a triple, and if anybody knows how to make triple engines, it's Triumph. It's just a beautiful unit. I do imagine in the new version of the bike that comes out, that engine's going to be either replaced or radically changed to probably up the horsepower or whatever, but I used to have the very similar 1050 lump in my old uh, Tiger 1050, and I miss that engine. It's a great engine in this bike. Got character. It goes well. It sounds lovely. Great lump. Uh, and then uh, next up, again, something I always say about Triumphs these days, the fit and finish and build quality is absolutely beautiful on this bike it's got lovely little touches things like that on the top yoke things like uh, just badges around the bike just the just the way that the thing looks and feels is top quality as is the case with all modern day trance so that's a great thing and then uh, the two final things i've written on the list and i think these are the big ones are the most important first thing i've written here is it's got all the basics right on this bike in terms of comfort looks and sound and to be honest those are the things that really matter when you buy a bike at least i think so because those are the things that are really going to annoy you or you're really going to enjoy when you ride the bike day after day things like um electric electronics and bits and pieces, um, you know, accessories and so on, are all sort of whimsical trinkets that are nice icing on the cake, but don't really make that big a difference to your ownership enjoyment of the bike. But if the bike sounds nice, it looks good, it rides well, and it's comfortable, 
all of which the uh, Speed Triple does in spades, then you're going to go on and love that bike. So that's a great thing. And then the last point uh, I've noted here for the positives uh, is the price of the bike. I think it's a lot of uh, bike for the money. Uh, the standard S bike, which doesn't come with the Odin suspension and some of the riding modes and so on, that's £11,600. Uh, this bike that I'm sat on now, the RS, 13,600 currently on the website. By the time you see this video, as I say, that things may have changed. But uh, yeah, I think price-wise, this is just an excellent value for money motorcycle. Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, long-term living with type review of the uh, 2018 Speed Triple from Triumph, this being the RS model. A beautiful bike, really enjoyed having it. So uh, thanks to Triumph UK for letting me ride it. As I say, by the time you see this review, there may be a new version of the bike out and I'm really looking forward to riding that as well. Okay, if this is the first time you've uh, seen my channel, uh, do please consider subscribing. It would be great to have you along. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer, but I do things like uh, trips and tours at home and abroad. Uh, I do monthly bike news. I do bits and pieces in the garage about how to look after you buy basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles i'll try and cover it here on the mission and fly it'll be fantastic to have you along all right that's it for now till next time this has been the mission and fly cheerio so the question that i know that uh, lots of people will be asking is would i have the speed triple over the street triple because i'm a big street triple fan of course having had mine now for what eight years now don't get me wrong, I love the Street Triple. But my initial uh, complaints about the uh, Speed Triple were that it was just too heavy and too lardy. Well, this latest incarnation has fixed all that. It no longer feels heavy and lardy. It feels agile, it feels planted. It feels powerful. It's just a lovely bike. So to answer that uh, question straight off, would I have the Speed Triple or the Street Triple? Money, no object, I'd take the Speed Triple. It's a lovely bike.